So, this course is about digital controller design. Digital controller where the controller is residing in the digital domain. And what is the controller supposed to control? It is supposed to control a plant which is residing in the continuous domain. And therefore, this course will focus primarily on the digital controller design. However, to design the digital controller, you need to understand the continuous domain plant. You need to mathematically represent the continuous domain plant. So, we will be doing modeling of the plant also, mathematically representing it, so that you may be able to perform digital control design which in the traditional method, state space method, optimal methods. So, before we go into the digital controller design, we need to understand what is a plant or what is a system. So, let us first try to see what comprises a plant what is a plant, what is the formulation and in what way any given physical system can be put into the formulation of a plant from the control design uh, control system point of view. So, this is a plant to be controlled and this has generically four ports. Remember always Generically, it always has four ports. Two of them are energy ports, two of them are signal ports. Okay. So, what are they? See, any plant, any system, we will see examples of these later, will have an energy input, it will have an energy output. Through these ports, power is fed in, power is removed out. Okay. There is a flow of power and uh, this is what we need to control. We need to control this flow of power, flow of energy through the plant and uh, that is our job and that is what we would be doing for most part of the course uh, this semester. Now, these ports here are bidirectional in nature you could have consider this as a source, sink, sink, source, okay. all are possible. So, it could uh, for some uh, system it could be like this, this port could be a source, this port, port could be a sink or for the same plant at different conditions, you could see that the uh, direction can change bidirectional ports. Okay. So, in general we say that they are all bidirectional ports as a generic this one and for the purpose of our discussion here, I will consider it like this. I will say that this is the input port and this is the output port. Now, the power flow from here through these ports flowing through the plant will be controlled by one signal port. So, we call that one as this, the control input port, very important port. It could be duty cycle, it could be voltage, or it could be current, whatever depends upon the plant or it could even be a mechanical input. Okay, this is a control input, this is a signal port, there is no power flowing through that one. Okay. There is one more port, an output port, feedback signal. We need to measure things in order to take the control action. We need to sense, it could be a visual sense, it could be um, an electric sense, it could be uh, sensing the voltage, it could be sensing the current, sensing the speed, sensing the position, so many. So, you need to have some electronics which will do the job of sensing. Okay. So, once we get this sensing signal here, feedback signal what we say, 
we pass it through a process that is what the entire course is all about what this process is supposed to be. So, we pass it through a process and then appropriately generate the control inputs. So, this planned and process together we will call it as the system. So, let us say the information or the signal processing part of it, the controller, the sensor, A to D conversion, D to A conversion all those things together with the continuous domain power plant, a power flow plant or the energy flow plant will be called a system. Okay. So, this is the system. Remember that majority of your system will have energy flow or power flow happening, okay. but there are some plants where it is not energy flow, it will be information flow, still the concepts are same. So, instead of energy it may be information flowing and you want to control the flow of information, many communication systems like that. So, there also the principles of control will remain the same but these ports instead of energy or power ports will behave as information ports. But this is what is important, these two signal ports, one is the control input port and sensed output port. Now, that is where the crux of the matter comes into the picture, how you will give this control input and how I will take out the signals. Uh, these two are aspects that we will be dealing with uh, in detail in this course. Okay. So, let me show a couple of uh, examples. You try to, now I will show some clipping, you try to visualize how I will put that particular system what I am going to show into this framework okay. and let us see because everything, every system whether it be mechanical, non-mechanical, electrical, non-electrical all those plants whatever the plants or a hybrid multi-domain plants, you should bring it into this framework. You should bring it into this framework of a plant containing four ports, okay. Only then you would have represented it and only then it is amenable for control, okay, design, control design. So, you have to first step is to bring it into that and how we go about doing. One is to visualize and then bring it. Then Next step would be to model it and bring out a mathematical representation and then after you have the mathematical re representation, we are ready for design. Okay. So, this uh, steps you need to perform before you actually do the controller design. Remember that controller design and the sensor design are 5 minutes job. Finally, in the end of the course you will say it is just only 5 minutes, 80 to 85 percent of the time in any control problem you are spending on trying to formulate it into this framework. You are trying to model it, okay. See for example, even in the case of an induction machine, induction machine Tesla invented very long ago, right. And we have been trying to understand and we are still trying to understand the induction machine 100 years later. So, initially speed control just by auto transformer, okay. Then uh, a better improved uh, speed control V by F uh, control that is uh, constant flux uh, control. It was scalar control means it is steady state accurate. And then later when we understood the uh, model of the induction machine much better, you had a much better model of the plant, then you could go in for vector control. So, the control there depends upon how well you understand the plant, better the mathematical representation of the plant, better will be the controller that you can design. So, these two go hand in hand, but there are some generic controllers, robust controllers like the PI controller which you can use for any plant. So, that you cannot say uh, I have not modeled the plant, so I do not want to start. So, therefore, you will not be able to make that uh, controller. It is like I will wait for the final version of the model before I uh, uh, start my control. So, that is not what you should be doing. It is a kind of an iterative process. So, this is the first clip. Observe this. What is this? This is a tap. 
water flowing and uh, someone is controlling the uh, tap knob okay that is all the clip this is the system I will say. Now in this system of course there is no electronics in it nothing in it this is a control system. How will you identify the various points and then put it into the framework of the plant so that let us see how we go about that. You can identify now let me put some put back the plant okay. Now this is the power flow okay. The flow again you see the term flow fits well with this particular this one. So that is why this particular example though we are not going to be using this um, example for the. So you have the water input and of course it is coming from the pipe. Now let us say this is the system here what I am showing and uh, water flow coming from the pipe there is a discharge there okay. So water flow output or the discharge output okay. now this is the system. Now what is it that I want to control? You want to control the output discharge rate the amount of discharge volume all those things can be controlled. So one of the signals that I want to give as the feedback would be basically the discharge okay let us say if I want to control that. So that is your feedback signal okay I will process that and then I have to give the control input. The control input is given here to the knob okay so that is the control actuation which you actually will do. So this is the framework that you would have put a particular there are many physical systems that you will see that this is a very simple single control input single output controlled output. So this is a CISO system SISO in literature you will see that it is called CISO single input single output system. Now here tell me where does this exist? Where is the feedback existing? Where is this process and where is the actua actuation existing in this particular system? So here it is in the person who is doing the job. So he is by visual means trying to measure the discharge then goes into his CPU head okay and then process happens and then uh, the locomotor action where the actuation is at this knob control action. So this is actually not in any electronic box or something it is actually in the head there and the sensing perception and control action is part of the human there. So in this control system human should also be within the system. I will show you another example bit more complex okay. Observe this again every day every day walk of life how do you map it into the framework that we just made. One of our former PhD students he is cycling this is a fantastic example of a very complex control system observe try to fit it into the framework is it single input single output or is it multiple input multiple output yes it is multiple input multiple output. very complex but it looks appears so simple apparently. Now let us try to put it into that framework so we have this we need to put it into this framework what is the input coming from here we want to talk of a power input or an energy input right direction force of the pedal is a control input right coming from the locomotor organ of the person. So here the power input is basically stored he has eaten <laughs> in the morning <laughs> either breakfast or lunch. So it is a stored energy which is there within the uh, person uh, so in input flow is food okay there is nothing because it is a manual uh, this one. And uh, we want to control it in such a way it is as easy as possible possible for him to ride the bicycle right. So this is within so he can ride longer and farther and faster whatever. 
speed of course is one of the output we would like to see how fast we want to reach the destination this direction is also an output we want to also uh, be aware of where we want to reach and how fast and also without uh, falling uh, you need to have a balance so these aspects are being done simultaneously right uh, speed direction balancing without falling all this are happening simultaneously and all these are control actions that are happening okay so speed sensing speed sensing happening actually uh, by a visual perception you are able to perceive while you are driving that i am going fast or slow you will not be actually using a direct uh, uh, what you call a precise measurement uh, saying that i am traveling at 12.8356 kilometers per hour and that's not necessary all you uh, at least in this control problem you just need to have a perception of high speed slow speed reasonable speed and that is there within the cpu itself right direction also by a visual perception you know uh, the direction so the sensing here is primarily the eyes eyes of the person balance balance again is a perception by the human in this case the cerebellum part of this brain starts working and it says okay this is your uh, your properly balanced so that is all these three are feedback signal perceptions from the uh, from the uh, very complex cpu that we have here <laughs> for this particular problem and the feedback signals are emanated and given to the process now the process has to generate control inputs so the control inputs for the speed one so you see here now that is the actuation okay so it will process should i apply more torque to the pedal less torque to the pedal should i if you are going on a down slope should i not apply or apply all those things will come into the picture that is getting processed there direction you need to steer so steering control so steering control is happening speed control is happening maybe one position control if you are doing a slow speed uh, cycling race um, then balance control how do you do the balance control by shifting the weight so the center of gravity is try to be uh, is uh, is maintained within a zone of the angle of the vertical spectrum and you will see that uh, by shifting the person shifting the weight is trying to adjust the center of gravity and uh, control the um, three things so you see that this is a very complex control multiple input multiple output in this case it is three inputs three controlled outputs and therefore you can call it as a three control input three controlled output system okay or in short a three input three output system okay in a more generic form this is called a multi input multi output system okay this is actually a very uh, very beautiful system very difficult to do it by a robot or uh, even control electronics can be done see we uh, we do it in parts you remember the inverted pendulum you have seen the inverted pendulum balancing by the hand that is you have a stick and then you balance by the hand so that is uh, a balancing act okay you are focusing only on the balancing act now an electronic separately to just to do the balancing act uh, you you may have seen uh, it's uh, uh, done so it has to do that inverted control pendulum uh, pendulum problem speed control of the motor problem and steering control all these together okay can be done but we'll see you'll see later when you do it by the state space system it's all so trivial and simple you will do it in 5 minutes okay one uh, one more example this example is the one which will be the basis for all your lab experiments so that is why this particular example it is a very simple system uh, single input uh, single output probably you could make it into uh, dual output 
but anyway uh, I will just show you this. So, what is this? This is a DC motor, this is a shaft of the DC motor and uh, we are doing speed control. The speed control here is done by this auto transformer box and here actually the speed control is done by the person, but we will be doing it with electronics, right. So, that is uh, about this particular system. Let us also map this to the formulation that we have been discussing. We have the system and we have the plant. What is the input? Energy coming from the grid, battery, whatever. So, that is basically this box uh, and uh, this is being modulated. So, that is actually the actuator, control actuator, okay. What are you sensing? So, you would like to control the output which is the speed, shaft speed and uh, that would be your controlled output. So, you need to sense that and that is the feedback signal goes through our control process and generates the control input, the control input is that actuator. So, this is a single input, single output plant. Sometimes you may want to also do position control, okay. You may have to attach a position sensor and have a shaft position encoder. You need to have a shaft position encoder, sense that and then send it out. Then you could have two outputs, multi output uh, system but the control input will still be the same duty cycle. So, you can think of many, many, many applications just you try to map this mapping is very important because this visualization you will have to get uh, that is the first step because what you would see now let us say uh, population of a country I will just give that as the plant can you map it into this plant. So, that itself uh, that is a uh, very complex show show dynamic uh, control uh, system, okay. So, need not necessarily be electronic, whatever you see while you are walking around, everything is a control system the plants, the trees, the air, the uh, uh, ratio of the various percentages of uh, the um, uh, elements in the air that we breathe, all are controlled to precision, okay. All are control systems something somebody will be doing, okay. But uh, these are all control systems, everything is a control system. So, you will have to try to visualize toys, fans, blower, so many things are there in and around you, pumps and compressors, spindle motors, try to map it into this four port formulation, electric vehicles, locomotives, all are control systems, many, many problems. So, now let us see how we will represent a generic control system. We need to do our work of uh, designing the controller, okay. We had uh, till now seen uh, the plant here. So, this plant here is having the four inputs. At this point let me just say that many a times or even in the literature it is not shown as four inputs. It will be shown like that, okay. And you have a control input, you have an output and then feedback. Something like that and then you will have a controller there. So, it looks like as though this plant is having two inputs. So, for uh, the sake of uh, speed, okay, people will not use these two, they may not indicate it on the figure, but even if it is not indicated, remember that you have these two ports, the power ports which are there, because most of the time in the textbooks they are dealing only with the control sense and control. So, they will not write that, but even if they do not write that, it is there. You will have to uh, keep remembering that it is a four port platform. So, we were uh, always discussing now here about this process, right? Feedback signal, process and control. What is this? This is 
a black box. We don't know what goes on inside, and then this is what we are supposed to do. So let us expand that. So in general, you will have a block called a comparator block, a difference. It takes the difference between uh, two inputs and puts out the output here or the difference between that called the error. So what are these two inputs? Okay, as I said, this is a difference. One of it is the sensed output. The sensed output I am directly feed, putting it through feedback. Of course, it can be processed and put through feedback, but I am just indicating here. The sensed output I am going to directly put to the minus terminal. Negative feedback. Okay. This is called the feedback signal. And what is here at the plus terminal? It is the reference. It is also called the command signal. You give a command, the feedback signal follows the command. It is also called the desire or the desired signal. You would like the feedback signal to be like this. So therefore, the desired value. So you will see in different literature various such names coming into picture. But uh, reference and command are very popularly used. Now you have this reference, the plus terminal, minus terminal will have the feedback signal. The difference of that is the error and the error is fed to a box which we call controller. And what is the job of the controller? The job of the controller is to see to it that its input is 0. The input of the controller is this. So the main function of the controller is that it should make its input 0. How? By trying to control its set its output. So the controller will adjust its output which will be the control input for the plant which will adjust things in such a way that this sensed output will match the reference. So when it matches the reference, the error is 0. Okay. So the job of the controller is that. It should see that its input is 0 by adjusting its output, a very uh, strange way of uh, uh, functioning, but that is how the controllers will have to function. right? Now uh, generally in the physical world, all the systems are continuous right majority of the systems are continuous at least uh, at this uh, macro vision level of course when you start going down to the quantum level uh, you don't know whether it is discrete or uh, continuous okay it is probabilistic <laughs> so therefore but we all our controls we are going to do at this macro level using newtonian mechanics and newtonian physics so everything, the controller and the plant were all con considered in the continuous domain and designed. So you will find a lot of literature, a lot of books where the Laplace domain or the S plane representing the cont continuous systems were employed and uh, used for analysis and design of the systems. You are familiar with that. In your BE control systems course, you would have studied. Uh, the continuous domain principles for designing and analyzing the various plants. So you would have used the S plane, the uh, S domain analysis and poles, zeros, all those things you would have studied. Okay. We still use the concepts of poles and zeros and all those things, but the analysis no longer will be in the S domain because today almost all the systems here at least in this portion, in the controller portion will be housed in a microcontroller or some digital controller. Okay. No longer it is continuous, it is discrete, uh, discretized, quantized. But the plant is existing in the continuous domain. Plant is still always in the continuous domain. So you have a divide, okay. the controller 
existing in the digital domain and the plant in the analog domain. So all this right side part of right side part of this vertical line is the analog world and all the left side part of the vertical line is the digital world. So you will uh, invariably see that when I am taking the sensed signal into the left of the vertical line, you need to put a A to D converter. And likewise some analog, some discretization analog to digital and likewise here uh, digital to analog. Of course, it may not be explicitly put there. Uh, sometimes you give the digital signals directly to the plant control input, the plant will uh, convert it to analog by means of some filtering and things like that. One, okay. But uh, it comes back into the analog domain. So this is the uh, control system that you would see in uh, today's, uh, uh, majority of today's systems electronic system that is if you are doing the control by electronic means. Okay. So now the issue is part of part of this whole system is existing in the analog domain and part of it the one which we want to design and fix and then uh, make is in the digital world. Uh, how do you match these two? How do you uh, make them uh, compatible with each other? There are two possibilities. So I will say design of the controller, there are two possible methods I will say, I will put it like this, there is this plant, I will, I will draw a controller, small controller like this, I have a feedback signal, okay. Likewise, I will have this also. <coughs> Both look same, but you will understand. Now I am having this, what I am drawing here at the top, okay. Now let us say what we have is this, okay. This is analog, this is digital. Now the question, should I take this into this world or should I take this into this world and design? For designing, for design purposes, this will continue to be in analog domain, this continue to be in the uh, digital domain when you are finally designed and implemented and things like that. For purpose of design, all should be in the same world. Otherwise, you will not be able to perform the this one. One option is that I shift this line like this. So you are having analog, digital. So I have brought the plant also into the digital world. Now I will design the controller and fix this controller and then this controller will stay in the digital world, plant will be in the analog world as usual. This is for the purpose of design alone. The other possibility is, is to do it like this. I will design the controller also in the analog world, I will design the controller in the analog world. I will use all my S-plane methodologies, S-domain 
knowledge which I already have in designing analog controllers of, of your. Then after having designed the controller, so I will design this controller in this analog domain, then I shift it here. Agree? Because it has to exist here finally. After having designed this, I shift it here. In this case, I bring the plant inside the digital domain, do all the analysis, design everything in the digital world. In this case, I bring the, I do all the work in the analog domain, design the controller and then after having designed the controller, I will bring the controller to the digital world where it will exist. These are the two possible approaches, people have used both. Which do you think is better? Here this, why? Easy, this is also easy, this also all the um, theory is uh, well done for more, th more than 100 years it has been um, popular. Only recently the microcontrollers came, so people are comfortable doing it in this domain and then pushing it into the this one. How do you push it into the digital world? How do you take anything into the digital world? You have to do sampling, right? You have to do sampling. Uh, some kind of sample and hold will come into the picture. So what is the information you need for taking something into the digital world? What information that you need, extra information that you need such that for you to do all your operations in the digital world for converting a particular um, system or a plant from an analog world to the digital world vice versa, what is uh, the uh, important parameter that you will look for? Yeah, you will look for the bandwidth and based on the bandwidth you will say I will sample at this rate better than the Nyquist rate so that um, uh, all is well and uh, I do not lose any information. So you have to in, in doing this you should have used the sampling time, I am indicating it by TS, you should have used the sampling time to take it in. Likewise here where you will use after having designed I will use the sampling time. Okay. Now there is notice this, in this I take the plant in, so I have considered the sampling time while taking the plant in. So before I do the design of this controller, I have also considered the sampling time into it because the plant has been brought into the digital world a priori. Okay. But in this case, you are doing the design in the analog domain, sampling time information is not there at the time of doing the design, then later you are taking it in, at that time the sampling time comes into the picture. So you will have to do some back and forth or the controller that you will do is valid at uh, sampling time very, very small. Uh, but you would definitely uh, mean that if, if, you, if, you say, if you say that I have to use a very, very, very small sampling time which means high frequency, then the processor should be really strong, hefty, lot of strain on that. So here at the time of design you have considered sampling time, here at the time of the design you are not. So therefore this is a much more preferred method and you will uh, land up with uh, microcontrollers, digital processors which are uh, much uh, uh, less stringent in spec than with this method. With this method you will land up with a very, very highly, uh, highly specced microprocessor or DSP. Okay, this thing you have to understand. So all the, so all the new books, many of the new books you will see taking this approach. So the Fra Franklin Powell uh, and the Workman which I mentioned, you know, that also uses this uh, 
uh, approach, uh, logical I would say to do that one. So, we also will use that. So, that is why in all our examples and course, we will be using the Z domain not the S domain. So, what is it that we will be mainly covering? Okay. So, we need to understand the plant, this portion very, very important we need to understand this. Without this, you would not be able to do much work on the controller except for a PI controller. Let us say PI controller is very robust, it is uh, you can do considering the plant as a black box and then still do that, no problem. But if you want to go further, you want to do an optimal control. What is optimal? We will see all those things later how to do an optimal control, how to do fastest dynamic control. I need to understand the plant, how to do a robust control, I need to understand the plant. So, without a proper understanding of the plant, uh, it would be meaningless to make a design of the controller. So, uh, our first initial uh, couple of weeks we will be spending time on modeling. State equation method is the major or the main mainstay of this course. We will be doing it only by state equation method, state space and methods. Transfer function method, I will just use it once to show to you that is the classical traditional transfer function based controller design. But um, it is highly limited. Uh, single input, single output, uh, linear, time invariant system, all those kind of things. So, state space is much more generic, it will cover a much more broader um, uh, subject area. So, for modeling, we will, uh, uh, I, I will um, do one or two types, but there is uh, uh, what you call cross domain modeling method called the bond graph. Have you heard of bond graphs? So, that is something uh, that uh, is based on energy. It is a, a method, a modeling tool based on energy uh, and power flow principles because you will be having plants which are across domains which are not purely electrical. You may have mechanical, magnetic, hydraulic, and electrical, thermal, all these domains will be coming into the picture when you look at a particular plant. So, uh, one cannot uh, just say that okay, I am not a mechanical engineer, therefore, I will not model and therefore, I will not do the control. So, uh, you will have to um, understand how to do modeling uh, across platforms. So, there is an energy domain based uh, modeling called bond graph, just go to the internet, have a look at it. We will do that, uh, just try to get a feel for it. Uh, we will do this bond graph mod modeling method so that you should be able to uh, bring out the state equations of a plant which is existing, uh, which is comprising of uh, more than one energy domains. Could be electrical, mechanical, electrical, magnetic, mechanical all this put together. So, these kind of things you will land up with. So, how do you model all these things? So, that is one uh, aspect which we will be doing in the next couple of weeks. And um, digital to analog transitions, this is an important part because uh, not digital to, digital analog transitions basically uh, back and forth you should be able to go in and out of the different worlds and uh, the model may exist in one particular uh, domain, we need to take it to the uh, other domain, analog to digital, digital to analog. So, these conversions and transfer, tra uh, transformations we should be able to understand, Z transforms being a part of it. You would have studied S domain, S plane, Laplace transforms, all those things in your uh, BE control systems course. We will not be using that, we will be using the Z transform Z plane 
um, equivalents in the digital domain, sampling and uh, continuous to discrete methods. Then of course, the controller design itself will come into the picture. So, we will do the PID controller, the traditional controller using the classical uh, method, the root locus method, only root locus method I will do. I will not use the Bode method uh, basically because Bode method again is very limited. It cannot do all systems especially uh, if you have a 0 on the right half of this plane, you will land up with problems. So, um, that is again limited. The root locus can handle a much more uh, larger variety of uh, physical systems. In fact, um, that is the one most closer to the uh, state space methods uh, from the classical domain. It, it, it compares nicely. Then of course, the state space method where I will be touching on the full state feedback, uh, the um, observer based or the estimator based type of uh, controllers and then optimal controllers. Then the fourth important topic which we need to consider is sensing and estimation. See normally we would place a sensor, a sensor that is available and then you uh, place measure the temperature, measure the speed, measure the flux and all those things. But um, in some cases sensors may not be available or sensor it may not be possible put to put a, sen uh, a sensor to uh, measure the value of the state of the system. So, in that case you need to estimate. So, this is a big field, big domain and we need to do the sensing and estimation. Unless you do sensing and estimation and get out the feedback signals, you will not be able to do the uh, closed loop control. So, that is a very important aspect which we will be looking at the sensing transducer and sensorless estimation. And this is where you will have uh, the LMS algorithms, the Kalman filters al algorithms and things like that one coming in and I would like you to implement them also. Optimal estimation. So, Kalman filter is an optimal estimator. So, that is one of the things that we may uh, uh, we, we should do in the lab also. Okay. So, in all doing all this there will be a common plant for you throughout uh, the course and which is the DC motor DC genset and uh, you will need to control uh, this. I will make you into batches of two. Okay. And uh, people from uh, other departments, I will attach you with one of the local department guy. So, that uh, if you have to do at nights and uh, also at uh, non office hours and holidays, you will have access to the lab and e easier to come with uh, this one. Okay. So, uh, that way I will make the batches such that it uh, helps out in that fashion. We have given order for the plants. The plants are uh, not too small, not too big. It is of the order of 500 watts. So, the DC motor is a 500 watt motor in that range. Okay. You also have a DC generator and then connected. Then there will be converters for chopper drive for the primary DC motor. There will be chopper drive for uh, flux controls. So, that uh, we will of course, study that plant properly. So, we need to have a mathematical representation of the plant. So, we will study that plant. And uh, you may have to first uh, get out the parameters of the plant in the uh, uh, experiments that you conduct before you do the controller design. So, how you go about all those things we will discuss and then see uh, how you will implement it. Okay.